Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing a set of four HO Scale Southern Pacific SD45R locomotives from Scale Trains. Since I'm planning to base my future HO Scale layout on Donner Pass, I bought five of these units. Three are painted for Southern Pacific and two are undecorated. I'll be reviewing all three decorated models and one of the undecorated ones. All of these models are part of the Scale Trains rivet counter line. My decorated models are SP7490, 7502, and 7532. According to the box label in the Scale Trains website, the undecorated units should be able to represent SP7489 through 7536. Scale Trains offers these models in two versions. The factory direct price for the DCC Ready version is $189.99. The factory direct price for the version with DCC and sound is $279.99. I was lucky enough to get these models as a Christmas present from Nicole and her mom. You guys are awesome. These aren't sold as a set, but I'll be treating them as such for scoring purposes during this review. Each locomotive gets 100 possible points, so we'll start the set at 400 points. Each locomotive is packed in a durable cardboard box lined with foam. Inside is an owner's manual with DCC and other information. A two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. Thin plastic film covers the top of the locomotive. The handrails have foam protectors. The trucks have plastic supports that need to be removed before the locomotive is put on the track. The decorated models have no additional parts in the box, but the undecorated model comes only partly assembled. There are quite a few parts packed in the box, including frame rails, photo etched grills, window glazing and headlight lenses, handrails, and numerous other details. Two of the radiator grills were detached on my model of 7490, so I'm taking five points. A third one started to fall off as I was reviewing the model. One of the radiator grills was detached in the box on my model of SP7532, so I'm taking five points for that as well. Southern Pacific's SD45Rs were rebuilt by SP's Sacramento Locomotive Works between 1979 and 1986 from SP and a few cotton belt SD45s. All of the SD45Rs were lettered for Southern Pacific after rebuilding. The Scale Trains model represents classes EF636, LR-1, and-2, numbered 7489 through 7536. All of these units were upgraded in 1984, and many lasted in service on the SP until the UP merger. UP didn't hang on to the units for long. Many were sold off to other railroads or ended up as lease units. The details on SP's SD45Rs varied from unit to unit, so I'm going to talk about the three decorated units separately. Some of the things to look for are the radiator grills and truck brake cylinder locations. SP's SD45Rs shared some common features, including the louvered battery box doors and split doors under the cab. Both of these details are correctly depicted on the models. The models also have the used-to-be L-shaped window on the engineer's side of the cab front. The pillar between the vertical and horizontal windows is thinner than on the fireman's side. The Scale Trains models have the class lights entirely deleted, with not even round blanks to cover the holes where they once were. This detail appears correct for the two classes of rebuilt units that the model represents. SP's SD45Rs emerged from the shop with full light packages on both ends, unlike some of SP's non-rebuilt SD45s which only had them in front. Many units lost their oscillating lights in the late 1980s or early 1990s. Many gained beacons and some got ditch lights in the same period. Since some details on these units changed over time, whether a model is correct or not often depends on the date. The plows are close but incorrect for these units. There should be no notch in the brake hose. Instead, the hose should come through a hole in the plow in this area. Though this might be close enough for a lot of modelers, I'm taking five points per unit for this one. I found several photos of SP7490 dating from 1986 through 1994, and the model looks to be a close match overall. This unit had high-mounted brake cylinders during those years, which are correctly depicted on the model. It also had the far-style radiator grills. Since a couple have fallen off, we can see that Scale Trains modeled these with a see-through photo-etched part over a plastic grill. Sometime between 1986 and 1988, 7490 got Santa Fe-style numbers in its number boards. The model captures this accurately. A photo from July 1992 shows that by that date, 7490 had lost its oscillating lights and gained a rooftop beacon. A photo from 1994 shows it with ditch lights. The Roseville stencil under the cab windows matches my photos of 7490. The Scale Trains model of 7490 best represents the locomotive as it appeared after 1988 and before it lost its light package. I found several photos of SP7502 dating from 1985 to 1997. All of the photos I found of 7502 show it with high-mounted brake cylinders as on the model. 
A photo from July 1991 shows the unit still had its full light package at that time. A photo from November 1992 shows it with a beacon and ditch lights. I found a roof shot which shows that 7502 should have pan top fan grills in the dynamic brake area. These details were subject to change as the engines received maintenance, so I'm not deducting any points, but it's something to be aware of. 7502 had the more usual egg crate style SD45 radiator grills, which are correctly depicted on the model. 7502 also had the more typical for SP Roman style number boards. All of the photos I found of 7502 show it with a Los Angeles stencil under the cab, not El Paso as on the model. I can only see that area on photos after 1990 though, so I'm giving the model the benefit of the doubt. It's possible it was assigned to El Paso in the 80s. This kind of thing shouldn't be too difficult to change with some decals. The scale trains model of 7502 best represents the locomotive as it appeared before 1992. There are a couple of good photos of SP7532 on page 110 of Southern Pacific Historic Diesels Volume 12 from the 1980s. I was able to find additional photos of this locomotive online, but there is a decade-long gap between 1986 and 1996 where I found nothing. That makes it a little hard to pin down the details. In the photos from the mid-80s, 7532 has the unusual high-low brake cylinder mounting with one high-mounted cylinder and three low-mounted brake cylinders on either side. The scale trains model gets this detail correct. By 1996, however, the unit had high-mounted brake cylinders. Photo evidence suggests that SP swapped trucks on its SD45Rs from time to time, so this had to have happened at least once to 7532 between 1986 and 1996. 7532 had the far style radiator grills like 7490, which are correctly modeled, though these are also in the process of falling off. Not surprisingly, photos from 1996 and later show 7532 with ditch lights. It may have had a beacon, but photos from 1997 and 1998 show only the remnants of the mounting bracket on the cab roof. The 1996 shot I have doesn't show the cab roof, so it's inconclusive. The Los Angeles stencil on 7532 appears to be correct, though in my photos from 1997 and later the engine is heavily weathered and the stencil is all but gone. The scale trains model of 7532 best represents the unit as it appeared in the mid-1980s. The undecorated model could in theory be used to represent any of the units from 7489 through 7536. With some detail changes it could also stand for other SPSD45Rs. The model includes both styles of radiator grills, which is great. Unfortunately, it only has the high-mounted brake cylinder trucks. There doesn't seem to be an option to convert them to the low-mounted or high-low versions. For that reason, it would be best to use it to model a unit that had high-mounted brake cylinders. Thankfully, from what I've been able to determine, most of the units in the classes represented by the model had high-mounted brake cylinder trucks. The undecorated unit has the full light packages on both ends, though since it's unpainted, it shouldn't be too difficult to remove some of the lights for a more 1990s appearance. My overall impression is that scale trains did an excellent job getting these models right in terms of unit-specific details. The paint on the decorated models is opaque and thin enough not to obscure detail. All of the markings are crisp. Tiny stencils and other small writing is legible with magnification. Unlike the scale trains SPSD45 I reviewed previously, the separation lines between the scarlet and gray appear to be in the right places. The model has all the detail most modelers could want, like the nicely done rear-mounted brake wheel, Dash 2 style water sight glass, cab armrests, sunshades, and wind deflectors, and lots of plumbing under the sill. The one thing that, for me at least, spoils the party is the crooked handrail stanchions. This is a problem with the long hood handrails in all three decorated models and something that seems common with plastic handrails. I really think this makes this otherwise outstanding model look toy-like, so I'm taking five points for each decorated unit. This may be a problem for the undecorated unit as well, but since I can't really test it without assembling the model, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Thankfully, the shorter plastic handrails on the ends of the models don't seem to have this issue. Scale trains did a nice job modeling the double stanchions around the drop steps on the ends. On the cab, the model has separately applied windshield wipers and freestanding grab irons. The cab windows slide open and closed. I found them a little difficult to move. The cab has a full interior. The units in these classes had semi-permanently attached MU cables, which are represented correctly on the models. The drop steps look like they should be able to be put in the upright position, but they seem fragile, so I'm not going to try it. Above the plow, the uncoupling lever slopes up at the ends, which is correct for these particular units. SP did this on the front of some units with plows, instead of a straight uncoupling lever with notches in the pilot at the corners. The snow plow is modeled with the doors open and the MU hoses coming through. The rear pilot has a straight uncoupling lever and notches in the pilot. 
I was unable to find rear end shots of all the units, but this appears to be correct for the SD45Rs in the classes represented by the models. In back, the model also has freestanding grab irons and the full SP light package. On top of the cab, the model has a horn, freestanding grab iron, and whip antenna base. Roof shots are always hard to come by, but these details appear to be in the correct locations for these units. The whip antenna base could be drilled out for a small piece of wire to represent the antenna if desired. The dynamic brake and radiator fans have see-through grills. Looking at the undecorated unit, we can see that the fan blades and hub are molded as part of the shell. This makes them a little more recessed than they really should be, but the overall effect is still good. Be careful not to pick up the model by the dynamic brake blister. This part comes off, revealing the Loksound 5 DCC decoder and other electronics. Underneath, the model has plenty of detail. The sander lines can hit the truck side frames when the trucks pivot. I don't currently have any way to test the models to see if this would cause any operational issues. All the wheels pick up current and all the axles are powered. The locomotives have scale trains body mounted knuckle couplers on both ends. The front coupler on SP7490 is very low, so I'm taking 5 points. The rear coupler is at the correct height. The front coupler on SP7502 is also very low. The rear coupler is at the correct height. SP7532 also has a low front coupler. The rear coupler on this unit is also low. The front coupler on the undecorated unit is low. The rear coupler is also slightly low. All the wheels and all the locomotives are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. None of the models have any noticeable body wobble. SP7490 weighs 20.3 ounces. Drawbar pull peaked at 3.5 ounces on my force gauge. SP7502 is slightly lighter at 20.2 ounces. Drawbar pull is 3.1 ounces. SP7532 weighs 20.3 ounces. Drawbar pull is 3.5 ounces, exactly the same as SP7490. The undecorated unit is slightly lighter at 19.7 ounces, probably because as it comes out of the box, it has fewer parts attached than the painted models. Despite the lighter weight, drawbar pull for this one came out higher at 3.8 ounces. I'm using 7502 as my test engine, running it on DCC. F8 turns on the sound as well as the number boards and ground lights. F0 turns on the headlights, which are directional. The forward headlight comes on when the locomotive is set to move forward. The rear headlight comes on when the locomotive is set to move backwards. F7 turns on the oscillating lights, which are also directional. F12 dims the headlights. F14 turns on the emergency lights on both ends and shuts off the other lights. The engine starts and stops smoothly. It could probably be even smoother with some tweaking of the motor control CVs. F1 rings the bell. F2 sounds the horn. It didn't sound quite right, so I reprogrammed CV163 to 7. Now it sounds more like an SP horn. F10 is the independent brake. Pressing F10 will make the locomotive slow down and stop. Pressing it again will make it go. F9 activates the drive hold feature. This can be used to simulate the prime mover revving as a heavy train moves slowly. It can also be used to simulate an engine that's coasting. F4 turns on the dynamic brake sounds. I prefer KD couplers, so I'm going to swap the couplers on 7502 and fix the coupler height at the same time. The procedure is the same for the other models, so I'm only going to show this one. I'll start by removing the coupler screw. These were in really tight on my model and it took some work to get them loose. The coupler box fell apart as the screw came out. Use care not to damage the uncoupling levers or other details when removing the parts. The rear draft gear box is easier to remove. If it doesn't fall out on its own, remove the coupler spring from the box. KD-158s drop into the factory draft gear boxes. Make sure the coupler can swing freely. Installation is the reverse of removal. 
Getting the front one back in is tricky. Unfortunately, both couplers are still very low. Removing the couplers is also how you remove the shell. To avoid damaging details while I file the coupler mounting pads, I'll work on the model with the shell off. Unfortunately, because the screw threads are under the sill, I need to put the shell back on to test the coupler height. I also noticed that the wedge-shaped area on top of the draft gear box was too tight against the pilot, making the coupler tip down. I filed some material off the back. I also added an O10 styrene shim to the bottom of the draft gear box. It took some filing and trial and error, but I finally got the couplers where I want them. I'm using Pacer canopy glue to reattach the radiator grills. This glue will dry clear and remain slightly flexible, and since it's water soluble, it poses little risk to the paint. Let's see what we've got. Two of the models had parts falling off as they came out of the box, so I took a total of 10 points in the packaging category. The plows are close but not correct on all four models, so I took 20 points in the prototype accuracy category. The decorated models have crooked handrails, so I took 15 points in the paint and detail category. Six out of eight couplers were at the wrong height, so I took a total of 30 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with a total score of 325 out of a possible 400 points, which averages to 81.25 points per locomotive. Individually, SP7502 and the undecorated unit did the best with 85 out of 100 points each. SP7490 got 80 points, and SP7532 scored 75. Using the average 81.25 point score, these locomotives would get a B- on a report card. Overall, these are nice models and they deserve a green signal. I think Scale Trains did a really nice job on these locomotives. If you're looking for some 1980s to 1990s vintage Southern Pacific motive power for your layout, then I think you might like them. Thanks for watching.